Gardeners in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. A nursery plant that has multi-season appeal is the firethorn, also known as pyracantha. We're going to share with you all of its benefits and why it may be the perfect shrub for your landscape. Hear all about firethorn in our first segment. Hardy Moms are making it to your local garden center. We'll tell you how to grow and care for them in our second segment. Did you know with some plants you need a male and a female in order to get berries? It's true. Hollies, skimmia, and even some viburnums need both male and female plants to cross-pollinate in order for berries to form. It's time for the talk in our third segment. Drought, disease, insects all have taken their toll this summer. Lawns are looking ragged. Bare spots need to be reseeded so they can fill in before winter. Listen how to have the best results during our fourth segment. What's bugging you? Aaron told me he has a groundhog that's bugging him. Learn what to do about groundhogs and how to get rid of them in our final segment. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's Triple Action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's Triple Action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, everybody, to Bloomers in the Garden. Firethorn, the common name is Paracantha, is an evergreen shrub. It's so easy to grow and so useful in the landscape that it really deserves a spot in the uh, where we don't have it around our houses very often, do we? We don't. We, we hardly don't. see it. We hardly we see don't. it at all. Well, it it used to be very popular. Okay. Oh, very popular. Yep. It, it used to. Some older varieties had fire blight, so oh. everybody kind of stopped planting them, and now it mm-hmm. that even, I guess it's the older varieties are brought back and whether they're resistant, but also because they have um, sprays that can control it. But again, I don't want to get on that tangent. It isn't right. as, it isn't as big of a deal as we once thought it was. Mm-hmm. And here's, right. do you want to know the good part of what? pyracantha or the bad part? No, the good part. Good part. Yeah. Good part is they flower in the spring. Oh yeah. Masses of white flowers Ooh. covering the plant. Beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And where every single flower is, then an orange or an orangey red berry will Mm. form. And that That is is the good stuff. Yeah. Now, the the bad stuff, (laughs) 
but it could be used in the right spot. Right. Um, they have thorns. Oh yeah. They are called fire thorn for a reason. Uh huh. The <laughs> the every time we we come across Easter and we talk yeah. about the crown of thorns, oh, yeah. I think it's made out of this. Oh <laughs> yeah, know? is that what it is? Because <laughs> it is a nasty long thorns, and um, you oh, just yeah. And honestly, I I uh, uh-huh. it's been used in. We have that rose, that bloomers, oh, the yeah. urban, urban rose. Over here, yeah. And that urban rose was made to be planted in urban environments to right. control, like, underneath fences and places where you want it. You didn't want somebody to break in and sure. things like that. Firethorn is the same <laughs> thing. Oh. Um, often used to control um, for safety reasons. Mm. So it can be used that way. So yeah. I don't suggest putting this where you need to get to to turn your water on and off. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, right. That particular hose bib will stay off forever. Yeah, really? <laughs> I had a customer uh, say to me, you know, you want a plant that uh, deters people from coming into your home? <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Pyracantha is it, number one. Uh-huh. It's pretty and nobody would know it, but boy, it's got, a, it's got another <laughs> side to it. But it's a beautiful plant. And that you can also use it and you can do espaliers with it. And what a espalier is, oh, is like, like um, Republic Bank. Right. Have you seen that they're using pyracantha at Republic Bank yeah. and that they're intertwining it so that it almost looks like a lattice the way that they take yep. and they manipulate the pyracantha so that it creates that diamond shape diamond, yeah, it's and it's beautiful and, yeah. and it's really nice I, I was surprised to see because it does take a little bit of effort mm-hmm. to maintain mm-hmm. but it almost looks as if you you look at it and that it is outlined in green then it gets its flowers so it's outlined in all of the white flowers and then in the fall it's that Beautiful outline of all of those gorgeous uh, berries. Phew. So, again, it is a terrific, terrific, mm-hmm. terrific plant. Um, it's not the best around kids, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> when they lose their ball under this plant, yeah. it's also going to stay there. <laughs> so stay there yeah. I, they'll, they'll only take once. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, but uh, it, it is really a spectacular plant, and it looks so much different than other plants do. Mm-hmm. And there are other varieties. And I don't want to get caught up in just being general um, because, again, all of the varieties, like Yukon Bell, Pyracantha, is probably the most popular. Um, and these need to be put into full sun to partial sun that that they can take a little bit of shade but not much. Like one person's shade is, you know, the dark, you know. So it's not – it can't take shade, shade, but it can take a little bit of shade. Um, again, the, the Yukon Bell has abundant white blooms and orange berries. Um, birds love it. Oh, wow. Because birds will eat these berries as well. So it's a good pollinator, huh? It, 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 it is. It is. It's a pollinating pollinator plant. Yes, but it's the berries that's the berry, their food source. Oh, wow. Um, gets big. It can get up to 10 feet tall, and it can grow pretty quick. But it takes to shearing really, oh, really good. well. But make sure you have a nice l- pair of leather gloves to grab those pieces <laughs> yeah. on the ground. And the, the one thing is hardy. Some of the varieties of pyracantha, you've got to double check and make sure you're looking at your hardiness zone. Like in our colder regions of our listening area, it's a zone five. And this variety can take zone five, and that's the Yukon Bell, can take zone five to eight without any problem. Good. So now let's talk about another one. Low boy. Low boy. Pyracantha. Tell, tell me about low boy. Uh, this is a great plant right here because it's a, a ground cover. And uh, for those tough spots that you were talking about, you know, yep. uh, Len, and uh, that that will be a great uh, plant to have if you want a, a real low uh, kind of gr- uh, ground cover plant. Right. And it calls it ground cover, but it's not. It's like drift roses are a ground mm, cover rose. Sure. They really aren't. The You know, ground yeah. cover to me mm. is like Pacassandra or oh. ivy. But this will still get to be about three foot three tall. Foot. Yeah, that's but bad. that's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. So, you know, most azaleas are mm. going to get to be four foot. So it's going to be three foot and get about eight foot wide. And again, oh, perfect. full sun. Mm-hmm. And like that, that hardiness zone where 
the Yukon Bell is in hardiness zone five to eight. Mm-hmm. This one is in six to nine. Mm-hmm. So the coldest areas, like those of you that are listening out in the Poconos that are listening up in northern, northwestern New Jersey, mm-hmm. um, even some of the areas in New York, um, in the colder areas up in uh, New York State, you got to be a little bit concerned that that six, if you can, if you can tolerate, if your plants that you know that your zone is like that that sub zone where you can get a six to grow, mm-hmm. then good. The other thing is also you got to keep it the root system protected because it's the it's the roots that you'd want to be again mulched real well and taken care of. But that's only if you're in those colder zones. Mm-hmm. But low boy is a little bit more reddish on the berry. Mm -hmm. It's like a reddish orange, Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. I don't know. But uh, again, Blow Boys is is a good one, but Yukon Bell has been the traditional uh, pyracantha that's been planted for a long, long time. And I love it. I I love it. We often have some that are actually espaliered onto a trellis. And that uh, they used to be a great seller, but honestly, oh, they they don't sell as well anymore. I'm fine. Like, you know what it is? What? Do you have any hydrangeas? Oh, (laughs) I know. know. Do you have (laughs) any hydrangeas? I know. You know, people like, Uh you know, I want to get what my neighbor has. And that where we get stuck on these plants that are like hydrangeas or like, you know, it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Yes, have a hydrangea. But also have a pyracantha. Your landscape, it's color, texture, and form. If you're planting hedges along your landscape, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's nice (laughs) for a little while. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. But you want to have a mixture of plant material, almost like a perennial garden where you don't want to plant the same plant over and over. You want to have a blend of things. Yeah. They call that what? Monoculture. Right. Yeah. One, yeah. One, one type. That's right. That's right. Boring. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes it's called for. But again, mm-hmm. use a mixture of plants, mm-hmm. color, texture, form. Okay. The right plant in the right spot. And you identify that. You go ahead. Okay. I've got partial, sa- partial sun to full sun. I have something that I want to get three foot tall. I want something that will uh, flower and have you know, have color all the season. Well, this one, this pyracantha wow. gives you the beautiful, I mean, it's massed in white flowers. Nothing else is, is, is looking like that at that time of the wow. year. And then again, you have the flowers that last for a long time and everywhere there is a flower, there's going to be the berry nice. and it does not need a pollinator like our other section that's coming up. Mm-hmm. It is self-pollinating. So again, you will have the berries in fall. If you're a bird lover like me, that you 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 have wild pets. I love that. I love that. You know, I have wild pets because I feed the birds. I don't have to take care of them. Um, that they will feed on the berries, right. but uh, it's not like they disappear. And then when you get into the winter winter months, and there's any berries left, they're kind of shrivel up and fall fall down. You don't even notice it. Yeah. But again, great plant, great plant pyracantha, right. also known as fire thorn. Mm-hmm. Go to your local garden center, ask for it, do a little research online, but you got to make sure you're watching your hardiness zone. And if you don't know what we're talking about, the USDA hardiness zone, it will show a map and you will be able to pinpoint where you live on that map and find out what your particular hardiness zone is. It's real important for you to to know that so you know when plants are going to live over the winter or not. Right. Anything to add, Julio? I just love the plant because it transforms itself from what it is in the spring mm-hmm. to something totally different in the fall with the berries. I mean, you know, yep. what other plants do that? Yep, and I it's mean, a slender, gr- dark, dark green leaf. Very pretty. Oh, very pretty. Very yeah. pretty plant like said, it's without anything on it. Yeah, so awesome. Check it out. Pyracantha, also known as firethorn. We'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs, and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. James, won't you turn that old iPad off and come on over here and listen to the radio with Pop-Pop? I'm sure we can find something to listen to. Mm, okay. Let me see here. Let me see. It's going to be another scorcher. Mm-hmm. Out today. It's those doggone dog oh, days Lord. of summer with temperatures topping out in the high God dog, it made me drop my dog on coffee. Pop-Pop, what's a dog day? Well, James, it's funny that you ask that question, because every dog has its day. And the dog days of summer is a magical time at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, where they've got the nerve, the unmitigated gall, you'll learn about those words a little bit later on, to slash prices all over the place. I'm talking crazy numbers here. $50 off all Ludgood Japanese maple trees. 50% off all shade trees, camellias and oak leaf hydrangeas. Even all their fruit trees are 50% off. That's not all their nursery has to offer. 75% off French lilac hybrids. 75% off snow sprite cedar, tricolor willow, and enoki cypress. Meet petite knockout roses for $15.99 each or two for $25. To wrap up the dog days of summer with these palsam blowout deals. You see what I did there? I guess that bloomer, Pop Pop, you're barking up the right tree. How <laughs> you been hanging around your Pop Pop for too long? You starting to sound just like me. Hey, I, I see what you did there, young man. For more information, check out bloomers.com. You've got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, Julio, mum's the word. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Hardy chrysanthemums are arriving at a garden center near you. We got them last week for I the know. first time. Incredible. You know, I, I swear, if we keep going and, and pushing <laughs> stuff, they're going to be in in June. I oh, know. I don't want them in June. No. I don't no. want them in June. I, I, I like them. They used to be back in the day, you know, after Labor Day. Yeah. And that that's when, know. you know, that's that's when it, it made more sense because they bloom better when it's cooler. They have a normal, you know, cycle. They look, the plants look great. But people ask, people ask. They, yeah. We got them, folks. We yeah, them. like we we, got we've, we've got them here in the studio, a couple of varieties. You can see, well, we're going to talk about pinching in a little bit, but to where, you know, they're not the same size because... They're being forced to bloom now. Now, one thing that they are that mums uh, require the right amount of sunlight, and they're photosensitive. So photosensitive, Ooh. fancy, huh? Yeah. What that means is that they need a certain amount of light timed in order to be called into bloom. Okay, mm-hmm. simple enough. Yeah. You know, we we talk about this with poinsettias. Yeah. We talk about where when hummingbirds leave, it's based on the amount of sunlight that we're getting. It doesn't have anything to do whether you have your feeders out or not, by the way. 
but uh, new varieties are being developed so that we get them earlier. So, Julio Zamora. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> that you're not prepared for. Right. Would you buy your mums now or would you wait? I would probably, the way my pots are looking now, these look pretty good. Okay. So yeah. it depends on whether your annuals have, you know, petered kind of out. Petered out, yeah. Or if there's, uh, yeah. yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah. I, can, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, this time of the year, normally mums come in a nine-inch pot and they're usually mm -hmm. about 18 inches, well, at least bloomers mums are, <laughs> 18 <laughs> inches to 24 inches across uh -huh. and, and they're big, nice, beautiful, mounded, domed yeah. plant well, to look like in the pots. They look like mushrooms. Um <laughs> And that where these early mums are usually a little smaller, so you can yeah. you can stick a mum in your combo pot, and, and you yes. can, and that way you can take up that spot where maybe you're, I don't know, whether you had celosia in there or whether you had like I know that uh, calibrecoa. I've got a pot where my calibrecoa just I just died out, yeah. but that was my fault. Mm -hmm. um, again, mums are. Beautiful in bloom. Ugly as sin when they're not bloom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they look I like, mean, they're, they're, what do they look like? <laughs> well, they look like a weed. Yeah, that's right. They look like a weed. And and remember, mums take eight to nine months before wow. they're going to rebloom. It's mm -hmm. not one of those things where you can cut them back and they'll reflower and you cut them back and they'll reflower. Mm -hmm. And mums aren't that expensive like yeah. our large size mums they're they're four for thirty dollars so that's 750 each that's pretty cheap it is not worth babysitting that plant for an entire almost an entire year i know and then like you have to we're gonna get into what you have to do in order for yeah. it to stay nice right. um <laughs> it just is i don't think it's worth it uh, to i think I you either get them they're almost treat them as an annual even though they're a perennial so, okay, I said my piece. <laughs> right. All right, where do they go? Sunny spot, you know, if you can. Um, it'll take a little bit of shade. You know, those buds that, that are on them are already set to bloom. So a lot of the times that bloom is going to stay in the shade. But if they were naturally a, a bloom cycle, you know, the shade would not be the necessary spot that I would put them. So if you were growing them as a perennial, I would do part sun to full sun, not in the shade. Okay. Hmm. Mums. <laughs> Let's say you bought your mums in, in right about this time, and they go through their bloom cycle. Everything's great. They look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the winter comes, and it's, we're into, say, December, and that they're, they're looking green. What do you do with them? I know you're asking that question. What am I going to do with these what things? I, I just paid seven fifty for oh them. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Have you bought a McDonald's hamburger lately? I know Aaron has. Aaron, what's a how much is it? A McDonald's hamburger. Six Correction: four? I don't do the hamburgers, yeah. just the breakfast. Oh, <laughs> just right. the breakfast. All right, all right. All right. So, so all right. Well, but yeah, I do know the cost of <laughs> oh, yeah. seven yeah, well, seven fifty average, maybe oh, right. eight dollars. So, so, like, you rent that. You know, yeah, you don't get sure. to own it. For sure. And, and again, it, it, the price of everything has gone up. But a plant, you know, to replace it, like we have six-inch uh, mums here in the studio. They're five ninety nine, dollars just saying. Okay. Uh, actually, four for 20 So they end up being on five bucks. So for five bucks, you yeah. get a perfect plant again next year. Mm -hmm. But if you want to regrow your mums, here's my suggestion. One, enjoy them all fall. And then when they actually are have dropped their last bloom, you're going to put them in an inconspicuous spot in your yard and plant them. Okay? You can transplant if you planted them out front. You can transplant them into a different spot. And then the way, way back machine, they used to be field dug that they weren't in pots. Yeah. So what you can do is you put them in this inconspicuous spot in the sun. Yeah. It could be behind some things that you don't really see. Right. And you just cut them back. You're going to cut them back to about, eh, about three inches tall. And that's actually called a pinch. 
And that you'll hear about moms, they need to be pinched. They need to be pinched. And the reason why you're doing this is because you want that mounded look. Because if you don't pinch your moms, they'll get more irregular and tall and wispy. And they, they don't, they don't look, look like the same thing that you purchased. <laughs> so you need to pinch your moms back. So before you transplant them in the winter, just cut them back to about three inches tall. You don't want to go real low and be careful because mums can be brittle and that they can break real easy. So you want to use a nice sharp pair of pruners that are clean, right? That's right. Well, real quick, clean. how do you clean your pruners? A little bit of water in a bucket with a little bit of, um, I, I usually use uh, uh, Clorox. Clorox? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then also you can use uh, a regular alcohol. alcohol you can use yeah, alcohol. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're avoiding spread disease. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to put that in put there. Put that in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you cut them back. You move them into an inconspicuous spot in full sun. Mm -hmm. And you go inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's time to, to enjoy your cabbage and kale because that will last probably past Christmas. Mm -hmm. And in June, July, all of a sudden you'll go to that inconspicuous spot and you'll see my mums are growing. <laughs> and what you need to do is cut them back a third. Okay. And that, that's, that pinch, okay, you can do it with your fingernails if you have good fingernails or you can just do it with a pair of shears, which that's what I'm doing. Uh, and you're going to pinch them back. And that you just let them grow again. And then you're going to do another pinch after they've grown to another six inches, eight inches or so. You're going to pinch them back again, a third. And that last pinch, and the last time you're going to cut them back is July. It's usually mid-July, um, anywhere from, I don't know, it's, uh, we'll use my birthday, July 25th. Okay. I'm expecting gifts. But oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, that uh, – so – what will happen now is that every time you're pinching it, it's going to make it more dense, more compact, and it's going to make it so that it's full of flowers rather than being real leggy. Mm. And, again, it's that, that same look that you bought your mom for originally. Wow, how about that? When it gets uh, to the point where they're cracking color, that's a cracking term color. in the garden center garden world. Center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the, basically that means that you can tell what color they are. <laughs> All right, that you're going to dig them up and transplant them out front to where you had them earlier or another spot. And you could actually put them into a pot and you could use them in a planter or something like that. But again, they're going to be bigger because next year's moms will be probably twice as large as the original size because you're trying to maintain that right. that domed shape. And they're going to they're going to get pretty big. Yeah, make room for them. Huh? Yeah, make room for them. So, again, Transplant them usually when they when they finally are butted up and they have that crack of color on them, and that then transplant them into the spot where you want to use them. Now, that is a eight to nine month process. Ooh. Or go to your local garden center like Bloomer's Home and Garden Center and buy your mums. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> is it worth it? Uh, it sounds like you need a journal for this. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, it's, you get. I could do it really quick. This uh -huh. segment could have been 30 seconds. Right. You know, three pinches, last pinch in July, end right. of July. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Done. Yeah. Easy. But it, you you need to do at least three pinches yeah, in order to to get yeah. that mounded shape. I don't know if I'm out but there that many times. Again, do you want to do you want to do it? Do you <laughs> yeah, want to yeah. do it? I mean, Whoops. those 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 of you out there that that are real horticulturists that that are like into it, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Those of you that are time poor and have just buy them again next year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's because you're time poor. Yeah, I'm time poor. That's time poor. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I'm just... Some people aren't time poor. That's right. I'm just lazy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. <laughs> you said it, not Anyway, <laughs> uh, you've said it plenty. I know. So, <laughs> is a memorial. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. If you've got questions about what to do with your moms, please... Contact us on the hotline. That's 609-685-1880. We're, we'll go through it slower. We actually can send you, we can email you a mom care sheet if you would like that. Yeah. If you'd like that, uh, ask us on the hotline. Again, that number is 609-685-1880. Hmm. All right. We're going to be back in the garden right after this.
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So, next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Oh, bury me not <laughs> on the oh. prairie. <laughs> bury me not. So how, me of, how often do we hear that, right? Never. <laughs> but we hear it. No. Never. You, have, you are a liar. Oh, yeah. My holly doesn't get berries. Oh, yeah? You haven't heard a customer say that? Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. What are you drinking? What's in that? Is that water? I, uh, I hope it better of, be. Anyway, our customers say that all the oh, time. Yeah, I know. What all the time? How come I don't have berries? How come I don't have man. berries? You know, and that where? Yeah, yeah, that's right. What right. is it? <laughs> it's intelligent design. It absolutely is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Some plants cannot self-pollinate. All right. That's what we all, we are saying right here. In some plants, males need to fertilize female plants in order to, for them to get berries. That's the thing. That's it. That's it. All right. Mm-hmm. Children they need to <laughs> cover their ears. <laughs> this is a sex talk for plants. <laughs> there are a lot of plants that need to have a male and a female 
in order to get berries. And that specifically hollies, if you have, like, for instance, winterberry holly is not right. is not self-pollinating. Mm-hmm. So you need to have female plants. And again, it, the sprite is a female. But then there's gentleman Gentlemen. Jim <laughs> there's, is the male. And that they are, you know, will pollinate a large number of different types of hollies. Wow. All right. So English holly, okay. An American holly, so I guess it's because they're <laughs> just <laughs> kind of like the revolution, you know. <laughs> right. It's mostly Englishmen that started this whole American thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so English holly will be pollinated from an American holly. But yeah. if you aren't getting good berries on like a Nellie Stevens, mm-hmm. Nellie Stevens is an English type of holly, okay, that you can use a couple of different ones. Let's see, um, Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. And it frustrates me. Gold Coast is a variegated English holly. Looks great, very pretty, but it does not get berries because it's a male holly. Mm-hmm. So, but it will pollinate your variegated English holly. It will pollinate your Nellie Stevens holly. So again, I know this is confusing, folks, but one thing I'm just, when you're designing your landscape and you're at the garden center, I find it very intelligent when customers ask, do I need a pollinator for to get right. berries on this? A lot of times there are plenty of uh, landscape plants or even wild plants like American holly is, is pretty, um, I find it invasive anyway, but where it will pollinate a lot of different types. And you may notice that hollies have names like China girl, China boy, you know, yeah. blue girl, blue, blue boy. boy. You need the pollinators to do their thing, you know? I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's like a singles it. bar. You know, for hollies, and that you need to have, you know, both male and female. Mm-hmm. What else is like that, Holio? Oh, yeah, you have the skimia, which is a Japanese skimia we're talking about. It needs a male and a female. So yeah. you, so you got to have both in order to get your berries. And skimias are a great oh, landscape plant. plants. They don't yeah. get real, real big. Yeah. Um, only it grows slow, only a couple of feet tall, nicely yeah. mounded, uh, dome, dome shaped. Dome shaped, yeah. Fra- flowers are fragrant. Oh yeah, and then again, it's it's those bright red berries, and mm, and it's uh, it's like cr- Christmas berries, oh, you know. Yeah. Like uh, holly, of course, is always used, but the the way that the varieties on skimmia are is that that berry cluster is very large, mm. and it just is a beautiful plant. It is, cool. and it also can grow in full shade. shade. Yeah, how about that? Okay, uh, likes moist soil, not soggy, not mm. wet. Um, and again, it's a great plant, great plant. Great but again, plant, that's yeah. skimmia. We're talking about Japanese skimmia. Viburnum. Viburnum, yeah. we, we have yin and yang. yin and yang viburnum because yeah. they require a male and female yeah. in order to pollinate the berries. It's just, it's just what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, there's another variety of viburnum called Cardinal Candy, and you can tell it's, it's a variety that is favored by birds, especially smothered in, in white blooms in late spring. And it has like a thick leathery leaf and then the beautiful, impressive crop of lustrous red berries. And deer resistant, another benefit, okay, and even can grow in shaded conditions. Hardy, super hardy, five, five to the eight. Oof. But again, it requires a pollinator. Now, it'll set up, again, if you have a male variety that it will have, like what I'm saying is like, for instance, in your neighborhood, if you have a male variety of um, like, for instance, uh, tandoori orange within like 50 foot that you will get berries on both plants. So it doesn't have to necessarily be, I need a male uh, cardinal candy. Yeah. All right. So you, it just needs certain types. Um, another variety is David, uh, Viburnum David. I love Viburnum David. It is low and compact. 
similar size to, say, a azalea rhododendron. Not too big, tight, but it's got great, great berries, blueberries. Love it. I love that plant. And again, it, but it requires a pollinator. Um, brandy wine. Brandy wine. Yeah. We're right here. Right, right here. Right near, <laughs> right near brandy wine viburnum. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is a Tim, Tim Wood. Wood. Yeah. yeah. I, Our plant hunter guy. Yeah. He was here. Uh, not yeah, too long he was ago. on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, most beautiful berry display in the plant kingdom. And it's because it has a mix of like a pink and purple yeah. berry on it. But if you awesome. don't have. You know, if if you don't have a male to pollinate it, it's not going to develop very well. So, again, uh, pollinator Winterthur. Oh, another one. Oh, uh, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Winterthur viburnum is a pollinator for that. Mm-hmm. One thing I was surprised at is black lace elderberry requires a pollinator. Yeah. Um, and so, again, it has to have male and female Um that it is like that that I think we call that sometimes a poor man's maple. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a poor man. Uh, Zambucus. Cap- yeah. It's a botanical name, but you don't really need to know that. Mm-hmm. But we do need to know is that there's um again, you need to have the native in the area, which most of the time we do have again, it is sumac. sumac. So a sumac, okay. regular sumac. Okay. The weed, the one that stinks when you touch it, will pollinate, pollinate. the black lace elderberry. About that. So, again, mm-hmm. just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's something that you need to be aware of. And, and as all of our listeners escalate their game as far as in the landscape, mm-hmm. there are some plants that, you know, you may be wondering, how come? And then I've had people where they buy the male one, mm-hmm. and it just isn't going to get yeah. berries. Like, the the gentleman Jim, you know that yeah. that winterberry. Exactly. I planted a winterberry that doesn't get any. It's like, well, your neighbors probably have great berries if it's they right. have the female <laughs> next door. Yeah. So again, yeah. just make sure that you're checking with if bearing plants if it requires a pollinator. The majority of them are self pollinating, but it's just interesting to see that you know it goes back to yeah. you know the birds and the bees birds and the bird. you know the it's elderberry amazing. trees. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, birdhouses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomer.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. 
dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, recently we have had a run on customers who are coming into Bloomers wanting to seed the bare spots in their lawn. Why do they have bare spots in the first place? That's the one thing. It's disease or insect. You can treat for diseases and insect and put your seed down the exact same day, okay? It's not going to affect the seed germination. And if you're going to do it now, you got to make sure that you're going to be able to water it because we are not done with summer. A lot of people like, you know, as when Dunkin' Donuts has their, you know, pumpkin <laughs> spices out. And, oh, it's, it's fall. fall. Yeah, it's a, Danielle put her Halloween candy out on the shelf at the grocery store the other day. Wow. I can't well, believe we that. have some Halloween stuff up, too. Yeah, but, again, you've got to seed, and you have to cover that seed with a little bit of bumper crop, Julio. Yeah, bumper with, crop or peat. Yeah, regular peat moss. And that, that will ensure that it covers the seed coat. But what seed to use? You've got to think about it and think about what's in the bag. And on the back of the bag, it will say what's in it. Like, so, for instance, we have our own blend and that we contacted Rutgers years ago and talked about what blend would be best for our region. And it's a blend of perennial rye. It's a blend of fescue and a blend of bluegrass. Now, why is that important to know? Perennial rye comes up quick. Seven to 10 days. So that gives you something to take care of. Okay. Ah, grass is up. I've got to water it. I have to take care of it. During that time, fescue will germinate. And about two weeks to three weeks after the rye is, after, let's see. So it's probably about a week or two after the rye came up. Then you've got another two or three weeks for the bluegrass to come up. So a lot of people get discouraged if they're just putting straight bluegrass down. My grass doesn't come up. That that grass seed was terrible. It takes a month to germinate, and it's all about that seed coat. You have to have the soften the seed coat, and that's that. When you look at a grass seed and it's all tan and and it has that some, like, for instance, bluegrass is a little tiny seed, real tiny, and fescue and rye are a little bit bigger, probably twice the size. You have to break down that covering that's around that so that the seed germinates. And you got to keep it moist, not wet so that it's running down the street to your neighbor's house. You want to keep it moist. And again, you want to make sure that you're patient enough. And that's why we put that ryegrass in. Ryegrass, it's not, I guess, my first choice for your, for a lawn, but it's my first choice because it gives me something to take care of while I wait for that fescue and bluegrass. And and each one of the grasses have their, their qualities that you want, but you have to make sure that you're taking care of the, and softening the seed coat so it germinates. If you let it go dry, you go on vacation for a week and all of a sudden it dries out, that seed could have dried out as well and it was about to germinate, but now it's dead. So you got to keep it moist, have, you know, have a neighbor take care of it if you're going on vacation and make sure, make sure you put down a seed starting grass fertilizer on it right here. You're going to follow up, you know, if you're doing that four step plan or you're going to put, we want to, we want you to put down a fall fertilizer and that's another show, but it also have qualities that aid in the development of a root system and will help get 
your lawn started. Um, no weed control yep. until the seed has been up and cut at least twice. Don't get fooled. If it's ryegrass, you're, that's up in a week and you cut it twice. Oh, I can put it down. No, you have to wait till all of the grasses. So again, you're going to wait a month for bluegrass to come up. You're going to have to wait for it to grow a little bit. So you may be almost two months before you can actually put down a herbicide and that's a weed control. So be a little patient, be a little patient, but you can get those, those uh, bare spots taken care of, but you need to get the seed in contact with the soil, make it like a sandwich. You've got your own soil. You're right in your soil, not on the thatch, on the soil. Then you put your seed down. Then you go ahead and you put that either Bumper crop works great. That's probably the best. You can use peat moss and that they got to keep it moist. And then you put your fertilizer down and then you'll be have, you'll have that seed germinating again, depending on what you use anywhere from a week to a month to come up, but you can do it now, but it's got to be watered again. We're still not done. Summer is still around. Anything to add Julio? Yes. Uh, in our store and bloomers, we have the our own blend that we have, so we right. you know we can we can uh, take care of what we're talking about right now very quickly. Yeah. So again, make sure you look at what's in the bag. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial six zero nine. 685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880, and we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor organic potting soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend organic potting soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse. Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. And now it's time for What's Bugging You? Finally, I'm a beautiful butterfly! Aaron, <laughs> As, what's bugging you, Aaron? <laughs> oh, I know what it is. It's your groundhog. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, man. Yeah, big buck tooth thing that does nothing but damage. <laughs> yeah, man. I came outside and fell inside of a hole that it dig dug between my arborvitae. And I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Like, like almost up to my thigh. I oh said, there's no way. And then I looked in and then the hole looks like it went all the way out to my street. So, Do you have a cat? I don't. <laughs> you don't have a cat? No. Nope. Do you know anybody that has a cat besides me? Uh, my neighbor Your across neighbor? the street. But she also has chickens, roosters, hens. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what. Take, ask her for the kitty litter from... That's used kitty litter. You're going to love this. Used kitty litter and put that near the entrance of the hole. 
Oh, I've already filled it up, but I can Well, I'll tell you what, by the time you get home tonight, it'll be back. It'll be back. <laughs> all right. All right. So, all right. But again, it, uh, it actually works because it's, it's a, they, they don't like that scent. They also think that they're going to get eaten by the cat. So it huh. actually works really way, really well. Um, I'm not usually a fan of like coyote urine and, and all those things. I I just, I honestly, for a lot of them, I don't think it works, but I think this actually will work because especially with clumping litter these days, what, what it does is it stays around a lot longer. So just try that. Um, that, that works really well. Epsom salts. Mm -hmm. Another one. It will work really well. And then. Uh, we have actually something that is all natural ingredients. It's eggs and garlic, um, it's just different oils uh, that groundhogs hate. And it's I Must Garden Groundhog Repellent. <laughs> Repels okay. groundhogs because of the taste and the smell. And it's rain resistant. That's the best part. Um, and you just spray it along where the plants, where the, you see the groundhog basically you know where it's popping out of its hole, and it's usually going to eat. Julio had one a few years ago, oh, yeah. and he thought it was a bear. Yeah, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I, I think try the kitty litter. You'd be right. surprised yeah. oh, that what it does. There you go. I'll go there. ask her. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll be back in the garden right after this. Down by the schoolyard. Ooh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Lots of time today. Oh, yeah, no. It's bury quick. me not. Oh, bury me not. <laughs> and it's, a, it's a confusing part of horticulture with no, knowing what needs to be pollinated, what doesn't. Mm. Um, a lot of times this year we have like really big weeds. Oh, yeah. And people don't think weeds need to be, they need to, they turn into seed as soon as those flowers are done. Oh. Um, when it comes to pollination, Cross pollinating and like where new plants get done is like people they cross pollinate things, but just as simple as not getting berries. We hear this all the time. Uh-huh. I'm not getting berries, and, and that's because they don't have a male and a female plant. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it's um, if you've got problems with your burying plants where they're not producing. Call the hotline if you have any question, whether it's about your landscape, your garden, your lawn. Call the hotline at 609-685-1880. You're going to leave a message and we'll get back to you with the answer shortly after. If you're at your favorite garden center, let them know that you listen to Bloomers in a Garden anytime. So search for us also in, in your favorite podcasting platform or go to bloomers.com and visit the, uh, the radio tab. That's it. Thank you, Sam. Great job today. Great. Aaron. Aaron, will, he'll have us on video, right? We'll be on your YouTube. Please go and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Yes. Thank you. We'll be seeing you next week, same time, right here in the garden. See you in the garden.